Imagine the proportions of the figure by observing the way he is sitting the floor with one leg folded and the other knee raised. One hand placed over the folded knee while the second arm hanging over the raised knees. Observe the cut of the face. If it is round, oval or angular. Roughly mark the placement of eyes, nose and lips and even the angle of the hair over forehead. Thinness and thickness of the lead of pencil and pressure on it can create wonders in playing with texture of paper, scribbling, scumbling, hatching, soft strokes, vigorous lines and even highlighting or merging of contours. As, as this sketch is at an initial stage where the base is getting prepared. Just try to add middle tone to the drawing by scribbling lightly over the shaded areas of the face and hair on head. This shade will help further in bringing out more details and support the darkest strokes in the drawing. When placed with lightest and darkest pencil shading, this prevailing shade will automatically play the role of middle tone. Chuck Jones said, the whole use, the whole essence of the good drawing and of good thinking perhaps is to work a subject is to work a subject drawn to the simplest form possible and still have it believable for what it is meant to be. Similarly, till now the drawing is devoid of any details but one can easily make out the shape of the face and features even in a few strokes and scribbles. These variations in catching or hinting at the features through shading will only create a base for building the drawing further where one would see each and every detail. Now after drawing the basic structure of face, one needs to observe the shoulders, collar and folds of the shirt. The drawing of the folds is also a creative process of learning to see the graphic images selectively. One can selectively choose the ones which reflect the pose 
because of the model in which he is sitting. And the way this posture is causing the folds seem intermingled. Like which Muni's very aptly said, drawing is not only a way to come up with pictures. Drawing is a way to educate your eye to understand visual information, organizing it into a more hierarchical way, a more economical way. When you see something, if you draw often and frequently, you examine a room very differently. One needs to know which force to catch and which lines to ignore to bring out exact character, even if it is devoid of much detail. Draw the lines of the thickness of thigh and bend of the knee over which the right hand is placed. One need to observe that the bulge of the knee is fully enclosed in the confines of the hand placed over it. The angle of the second arm will reflect the position of the hanging arm over the raised knee. One needs to be very spontaneous in drawing the creases of the clothes. Because if an artist controls his hand more and is too conscious, then there is a possibility that rhythm in the lines might break and hinder the beauty of the drawing. The angle of the raised leg and curved in the angle of the arm and curved lines of the dhoti automatically are indicating towards the hidden bone structure. It is very important to catch the foreshortened arms and the shape of the hands as that only is one of the main characteristics of the pose of the model. The curved lines can hint at the hand holding the knee as well as imply the hanging hand close to the second foot. A few random lines over the base on which the model is sitting can add more character to the drawing. These lines can lead to the folds of the drapery and even contribute in shading of the base. No stroke goes waste. It will definitely mean something by the time the drawing gets over. It will link to a pose, a character, an expression or even shaded area. Start darkening the shaded areas of the creases of the clothing and arms. The scrubble over the grey parts or middle tones areas will add another dimension to the drawing which will step by step gain or third dimension to it through the treatment of strokes and shading. 
random patterns, crevices, shapes getting defined through the abstraction, etc. will lead the drawing to another level towards the step where the details will crop up with each new stroke added. Like John Berger said, drawing is a way of coming upon the connection between things. Just like metaphor in poetry reconnects what has become separated. After defining the shape and proportion of the model, it is the time to add details to the facial features. Darkening the line, joining two lips together, the indentations of eyes and eyebrows, nostrils, etc. will all help in bringing up the facial expression. Without observing the angles of features and their particular shape, which adds to one's personality, it is very difficult for an artist to bring out exact resemblance to the model. Gradually with practice, mind can guess where to turn the line, where to emphasize, where to shade and where to merge the contours to bring out the character of the model. Practice only can strengthen the hold of an artist over the subject. Now's the turn to add more dark strokes in the duct of the eyes and define the shape of the eye and eyebrow. One dark line over the eyelid, one dark dot for the pupil of the eye and the dark line shaping the furrow in the eyebrow is the first step towards adding finality to the intricate drawing. Perceiving the dimensions and exploring the creative strategy of simplification and intricate observation all becomes part of the learning process. Like Camille Pissarro rightly expressed, it is only by drawing often, drawing everything, drawing incidentally that one fine day you discover to your surprise that you have rendered something in its true character. Shading under the nostril, lip line, area defining the beard, shaded cheekbones, each patch will automatically guide another stroke and then collectively contribution of numerous lines and scribbles is coupling will lead to a complete look.
to start darkening the area under the chin. The neck has variation in the shadow falling on it due to the shadow depth created by the collar of the shirt touching it on one end and then the shade created by chin above it. The shading will indicate the bones of the neck. which are also a part of the darkness he created over the neck. Softly create shadows over the forehead and depth in the hair of the head by darkest stones. The direction of the pencil stroke can indicate the direction in which the hair are combed and trimmed. It totally depends on the artist how he wants to treat his subject. With rough strokes, careful and delicate lines, spontaneity, smoother or a the dealing or treatment reflects the mood of the artist, the need of the subject, variety of technique and also the possibilities of the medium being used. An artist can make conscious choices also which appears effective for the exact expressions. And with his series of intuitive decisions, he brings various elements together to form a unified The shading over the creases of the shirt will enhance the drawing more. These are not random linear strokes but trying to catch the depth created by the folds and which will further emphasize the hidden body structure. These touches will contribute more to the gravity of the drawing. Look deeply into tonal variations and try to grasp the subtle differences. A few areas like the fold of the cloth thrown over one shoulder and then the triangle formed by the angle of hanging arm and raised thigh need to be darkened more to achieve the balance of the tone. Drawing is simply a balancing act between the element of light and shade. In fact, all drawing is a constant balance between your observation, your concentration, your judgment and your technique. Shade over the neck, eye, forehead, ears and put dots reflecting the stubble of the beard. This touch and retouch takes the drawing to 
another mature level which reflects the realization of an artist where he notices the need of changes to be made with every new stroke he adds to his drawing one can feel the visual dialogue among different elements and dissimilar and similar characteristics every dot and line will speak its own language captured in the play of light and dark the flow of the lines will indicate the direction of the folds of the sleeves of stressed arm and fall of the clothing these fluidity of strokes vitality skillfulness doodlings darkening and lightening of creases all will step by step build a relationship and depth of interrelated species adding details to the drawing is a job of patience the small dots and little strokes may seem unwanted to the spectator but for an artist they are important factors in bringing out details in his own meticulous way a fusion of senses and intellectual adding darker stone to nostrils more shading on forehead shading over shading on neckline is adding variety even in the middle tone and darker shades this feeling to touch and retouch shows the instinct of exploring more possibilities and a craving of explore more Henry Matisse once said I want to reach the state of condensation of sensations which constitutes a picture Perhaps I might be satisfied momentarily with a work finished at one sitting Perhaps I might be satisfied momentarily with a work finished at one sitting but i would soon get bored looking at it therefore i prefer to continue working on it so that later i may recognize it as a work of my mind
after defining the shape of the arm we start rendering over the shaded area and the leg which is laying down on the floor the flow of pencil will tell or depict the direction of the cloth and simultaneously the force in it The angular strokes of rendering will grant roundness to the knee. This variation of shading only brings the drawing to next mature level. Observing the chiaroscuro or light and shade highlights the prominent characteristics as well adds third dimension to the drawing shading under the knee and hip where it is touching the floor is a step towards adding dark stone by converting the rendering to cross hatching cross hatching doodling scribbles etc will all have their identity in drawing to give concrete shape to the model by bringing out all important details step by step the star adding the curved folds of dhoti these flowing Rhythmic and bold pencil strokes are reflection of practice, knowledge, and expertise of working with observation, imagination, intuition, and precision by arranging and rearranging lines and various elements. Keep on shading across the creases of the cloth. Mind will calculate the shape and depth even before the final touch. Like David Hockney said, drawing is like rather playing chess. Your mind races ahead of the moves that you eventually make. Keep on applying darker lines to the collar of the shirt. Folds of a stall hang over the shoulder and other dark spots visible to the eye. At every step, a few areas might be there which needs to be darkened to achieve a balance of tone. The small touches over the sleeves and arm will add more gravity to the drawing. One needs to concentrate and constantly balance between the elements of light and shade. Form highlighted by shading and a few projection of lines can make a drawing look complete despite having minimum details one needs to be observant enough to bring out the best without making a drawing look overworked the deliberate extra strokes can make the sketch loss it rhythmic beauty william strong chief very appropriately expressed vigorous writing is concise a sentence should contain no one
unnecessary words, a paragraph no unnecessary sentence. For the same reason that a drawing should have no unnecessary lines and a machine no unnecessary parts. Similarly, it's not important to bring out each and every detail of the multiple forms. Only a few prominent, one being highlighted, can bring out the pose and posture of the model. Time to draw the fingers of the hand kept over the knee. The artist needs to be aware of the anatomy and the inner bone structure, which will help him in drawing the body parts proportionately and also then for short end in a particular angle. The upper portion of the sketch is almost complete with the details of facial features as well as clothing. But now the lower part of the drawing needs to be brought in completion by adding details of hands and feet. A little shading here and there, even the head and the folds of the throat will be an attempt to explore more. What distinguishes the intellectual person from creative artist? is letters ability to form fluently new combinations of all the elements like impressions, experience and facts of formulate them in a new unusual way or to channel them into the artistic visualization. Second arm, another shoulder, darkened folds, shading in drapery in background, all are the part of next step. The aim of the artist is to form new personalized combinations. by which man's vision can reach the ultimate but this demands the oneness on the whole being, body, emotions and intellect. The special intelligence and freedom of strokes in cross-hatching in the background reflects the spirit of artists playing with the medium and exploring all possibilities. One can feel the imaginary and an impulse which is not under control. Drawing the body parts on the other hand shows the creative urge but has some 
restrictions due to proportions. After going the shape to the arm, one can avoid going into much details of fingers and hand by covering them by shading. The impression itself can reflect the position of the hand. adds to the charm of the drawing. Continuity, fluidity and movement helps in simplifying the otherwise complex formal relationship among various elements of form and medium. Time to add the final touches to the fold of the dhoti, shirt and stall over the shoulder. These final touches are never ending, but the progress in the drawing is demanding for the darker tones. Once needs to darken the edges and a few lines to add more depth. It's an effort to articulate little details which might enhance the similarity between the model and the drawing. In final analysis, a drawing simplified is no longer a drawing, no matter how self-sufficient its execution. Maybe it is a symbol and the more profoundly the imaginary lines of projection meet higher dimension, the better. By Paul Klee. Similarly, these additional lines are projecting towards an apt impression. These little lines somewhere deal delicately and somewhere with pressure are helping in bringing out the essence of resemblance and also reflecting the visual information caught by the inner eye of the artist and being depicted in his own individualistic way. And one should not forget the fact that every artist may have his own ideas, perceptions, concepts and depictions. Like Auguste Rodin expressed, the modes of expression of men of genius differ as much as their souls and it is impossible to say that in some among them drawing and colors are better or worse than in others.
some lines of highlight a few parts and some to merge to contours or depict the direction of the fold may seem abstract ambiguous and even meaningless as expected the lines which gave satisfaction to the senses of the artist triggers his imagination and shows his perception This feeling can be understood by these beautiful words. The sensuous and aesthetic release expressed in the scribble and the effect as he discovers the lines made by his crayons and the almost animal delight or sequencing play between the fingers are distilled found in mature artist this is the act of discovery mastery over the medium trains the mind to put strokes at the right and needful places An artist can respond to the challenge vigorously. Along with the creative freedom, there will be an automatic control over the proportions, rhythm of certain lines, and a few extra dots to enhance the features to break out. totality of the senses which will support the total experience reflecting the play of conscious and subconscious mind